drums I am in your presence When the world is overwhelming And the darkness hides the day I will run to you, my Savior In your light I'll find my way You're the shelter for the weary You're the peace I long to know In your arms I find my healing And your love it overflows In your presence I am whole In your grace I find my soul Every fear fades away When I stand before your face You are holy, you are near In your love I have no fear Here I stand in all of you In your presence all things new are raging and the waves are crashing in. I will trust in you my anchor you will never let me sink you're the hope that holds me steady you're the rock beneath my feet Welcome to the Uprise Podcast, where we explore faith, hope, and life's challenges. I'm your host, Bobby Ray, and today we start the series Faith in the Storm. Today's episode, Trusting God in Uncertain Times. I know many of us have faced or are currently facing storms in life, whether it's financial struggles, health issues, relational difficulties, or just the overwhelming stress of life. Sometimes the storms seem to rage so fiercely that we wonder if God is really there. Is he listening? Does he care? Can he calm this storm? We all face storms in life, moments of uncertainty and fear, but within these storms, we have the opportunity to deepen our faith and trust in God. What do we mean by storms in life? These can be personal crises, health challenges, financial struggles, or global events that shake our world. In the Bible, storms symbolize trials. For instance, Mark 4, 35 through 41 reads, That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with them. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to the disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. So, Jesus calms a storm, reminding us that he is with us even when we feel overwhelmed. 
But what does it mean to trust God during these storms? During these storms, faith in many ways is believing in what we cannot see. It's laying down our worries at God's feet, letting go of control over things we have no control of. Yes, it may be hard, but it is something everyone should practice more often. Often, when we do not have control over certain things in life, it will drive us absolutely crazy. It will be so frustrating that all we can do is scream out loud about it. Well, what if we try to just pray out loud about it? I know one thing that definitely helps me in these times of uncertainties is putting on a pair of headphones and cranking that volume up and playing worship music. My go-to songs are usually Run to the Father by Cody Carnes, Good Good Father by Chris Tomlin, and my most favorite, I Raise a Hallelujah by Bethel Music featuring Jonathan and Melissa Hilzer. What are some of your favorite worship songs? I am currently going through a tough time uh, where I'm faced with uncertainty in my own life. And it was during this time I learned that I learned the true essence of relying on God. I dropped off Haley at her mother's house this past weekend on Saturday. Haley is my 10 year old daughter who is stuck in a situation where it is just full of chaos and bad choices. Haley loves going to church and singing songs. She absolutely adores my wife. Uh, I couldn't have asked God for a better person to be a role model for her. Back to my struggle. I dropped her off and had about four hours to drive back home. Haley would often text me asking if I was okay. I finally got home, still trading text messages back and forth while cooking dinner and updating a game that she loves playing. So I finally sat down to eat some supper, conversated with my wife for a few minutes. The update on the PC game finished. I text Haley if she was going to get on the game at her mother's house and play because she waited patiently for me to get home, have supper, and update the PC game. Well, there was an unforeseen situation that arose and her mother explicitly told me I couldn't play the game with her or talk to her unless it was on my court-ordered days. Here's the struggle. While Haley is at my house, her mother acts and feels like it's open season with the text messaging and phone conversations. Why do I have to be held to a certain standard such as following a court order and she gets to go off the charts and do what she pleases? I got so mad that night, and I won't lie, in the back of my head I asked God, why are you doing this? (laughs) My wife then spoke up and said, uh, remember, we need to take the candy for church to for the church for Boobash. I chuckled a little bit and then said to myself, okay, okay, I'll be there in the morning, don't worry. It was like he knew that he had to show me somehow that he is there listening. The situation is frustrating for sure. <clears throat> Anywho, trusting God through uncertainty. You know, trusting God doesn't mean the storm will pass immediately. Instead, it's about finding peace amidst the chaos. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. <clears throat> Don't be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. It teaches us to cast our anxieties onto God. <clears throat> practical examples, pra- <laughs> practical examples. Many of us might ask, "How can I trust God when everything seems to be falling apart?" I encourage you to seek small moments of gratitude, recognizing God's blessings in your life, even when times are tough. Here's a story from the Gospel of Matthew. In Matthew eight twenty three through twenty seven, we see a powerful demonstration of Jesus's authority over nature. The disciples and Jesus are in a boat crossing a lake. Suddenly, a furious storm sweeps over them. The waves are so high the boat is being swamped. Now these are experienced fishermen, and even they are terrified. Meanwhile, that's Jesus doing. What's Jesus doing? He's sleeping. They rush to him, crying out, Lord, save us. We're going to drown. Jesus wakes up, and before calming the storm, he says to them, You of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he gets up, rebukes the winds and the waves, and immediately everything is calm. What a powerful moment. Not only does Jesus demonstrate his control over nature, but he also shows us something about ourselves. How often are we like the disciples, panicking in the middle of our storms, wondering where God is, asking, Lord, don't you care? And yet, even in the storm, God is in control. Even when he seems silent, he is with us. 
I love this story because it speaks so directly to our fears. We all face storms and some of them feel impossible to survive. But here's the truth. Just because God is silent doesn't mean he is absent. His silence is not abandonment. In fact, sometimes an invitation for us to trust him more deeply. Um, <clears throat> if you have a powerful story you would like to share uh, to the Uprise podcast, please email me and I would love to have you as a guest on a future episode during Faith in this during the Faith in the Storm series. You can also submit to us your story through email at bobbyraypodcast at gmail.com and we will read them during the podcasts. So here's some practical steps to deepen your faith. Uh, if you're navigating a storm right now, I want to share some practical steps to help you trust God more fully. Uh, prayer. Establish a consistent prayer life talk to God. Prayer life. Talk to God about your fears and uncertainties. How about community? Lean on your faith community. Share your struggles with trusted friends, mentors, or family. Scripture reading. Immerse yourself in God's word. Verses like Isaiah 41.10, which reads, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Wow. It reminds us he is with us, strengthening us. Reflection. Consider journaling your thoughts and prayers to track how God is working in your life during these storms. <clears throat> so today we've discussed how to navigate life's uncertainties by trusting God, finding peace in his presence, and leaning on our community. I encourage you to take one step this week to strengthen your trust in God, whether it's through prayer, reaching out to someone, or reflecting on scripture. Remember, you are not alone in the storm. Thank you for joining us today. If this episode resonated with you, please share it with someone who might need encouragement. Don't forget to subscribe and join us next week for more discussions on Faith in the Storm. Episode 2, Finding Peace in Uncertain Times. <clears throat> As we close, let's reflect on this quote from Psalm 46.1. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Wow. Until next time, may you find peace and courage in the storms of life. Take care and God bless. Presence make me new.